Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Our guest today is a powerhouse. Last year, she was voted the best utility executive in the United States, among many other accolades over time near and far. Mary Powell also stepped down from her position as CEO of Green Mountain Power at the end of last year, after a dozen years as its innovative leader. She led tremendous change in the organization and in how Vermonters think about energy. It is my pleasure to welcome Mary Powell for a chat via Zoom. It's so great to have you here, clean energy leader that you are now. And it's great to be here with you today. So, you, you know, you utterly changed the culture of Green Mountain Power with a major move, uh, reorganization, open working spaces, a merger with a larger utility. What was your secret or two to bringing employees along with that kind of intense change? Well, I mean, at the end of the day, I think the most important thing is, you know, with Green Mountain Power, we were, they still are, a service organization. And at the end of the day, everything that inspired the action we were taking was about how we could be more effective for Vermonters. It was all about how we could transform ourselves to lead in a way that our customers, Vermonters, the people we served, were telling us they wanted to move in that direction. And so, again, since it's a company full of Vermonters, serving Vermonters, you know, I think the most important thing in ter to tap into as a part of that transformation, repeated transformation, I would say, because mm -hmm. we transformed and then we transformed and then we transformed, <laughs> you know, it was always on the back of love of our customers, obsession with Vermonters and transforming to an organization that was going to be the most cost effective and the most environmentally uh, sustainable within the organization and then in terms of the products and services that we brought up for Mars. So that was the North Star that guided us through the cultural transformation and all of the changes we were able to accomplish. Well, also, you, you know, your ideas were, were innovative and very creative for, for the corporate world in, in particular. They, these were new ideas that you brought to the fore. How much did being a woman in a male-dominated industry help or even or hinder your leadership goals and style? Well, I mean, you know, honestly, I think the part that helped, Fran, at the end of the day is I always felt like an outsider. So because I felt like an outsider, it was it was easy to lean into being an outsider. So by that, I mean that I felt uninhibited to be myself and to because I knew fundamentally I wasn't going to fit in. I mean, when I became the CEO of Green Mountain Power, I was one of, I think, four in the entire United States of America of investor owned utilities. So there was no way I was going to fit in. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And I also didn't come from the background that you typically see in these jobs. So not only was I from a gender perspective, an outlier, I also was from an educational and an experiential perspective. So I just like, I like lead with my North Star and I leaned into not worrying about fitting in, but, but to leading in a way that I thought resonated with the people I worked with and the people that I was hired to serve. Right, and, and you come from this creative background. You just reminded me you're, you're in New York City right, right now. Your dad was an actor and you, you followed that. So I'm sure you brought that to the fore as well. Yes, yeah. without a doubt. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you championed re renewals while, uh, while holding down on rates. That was very important uh, while you were there. How did you overcome that prevailing wis wisdom that re renewables just aren't affordable? Yeah, well, prevailing wisdom always annoys me, honestly. Because <laughs> I, I think it tends to be one dimensional. And so, you know, really our path so much started because, and I also always like to say anything worth doing is hard. Mm. Like, let's be clear, it was not easy but it was worth doing and it was worth figuring out. And really it started with, you know, we had, we obsessively surveyed Vermonters uh, once I got to Green Mountain because I wanted to know what they wanted. And it was very clear, Vermonters wanted a green energy future and they also didn't want costs to go up. So, you know, at first it was like, oh, isn't that funny? How are we gonna do that? <laughs> you know, and then it became, no, like that's what they want that's what that's our job to figure that out and it led to so much of the innovation that is still coming out of that company i mean i just saw the other day they announced three million dollars worth of savings for all customers because of the storage devices that we got into vermonters homes so it really what sparked the innovation was what always sparks innovation which is 
you know, a dramatic need that needs to be filled. So we really set about, you know, controlling every cost we could and then embarking on utilizing new energy technologies in the way that could be the most affordable for Vermonters. Great, and is it easier to pull this kind of change off in Vermont, which is a small rural state where, where we basically know each other? Yes, I mean, you know, the good news is everything we did and do could be replicated. And that's the power of Vermont. When we, when we do innovate really cool ideas, they can be scaled up in other states. So that is my hope. But Fran, you are absolutely right. In fact, you know, if it, I, didn't, I didn't do my career by design, but it worked awesome that I worked, you know, for three governors in three and a half years, because one of the things I learned when I was in Montpelier was, oh my gosh, we're so tiny we can actually get around a table and figure stuff out if we have the will to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was really, you know, everything that we accomplished, we could never have accomplished alone. It was about deep collaboration and going and collaborating in spaces that were seen as traditionally unfriendly for utilities. So, so I always like going there first, you know, <laughs> so because those are, those are the collaborations you really need are the folks that, historically haven't wanted to collaborate with you. Well, speaking with collaboration, what is our responsibility when it comes to energy? What do you, what do you wish people understood better about energy creation and consumption that this still seems stuck a little bit? Um, well, I guess the thing that is, I feel like it is catching on. I feel like, I always felt like my role was to help accelerate a consumer-led revolution to distributed technologies. Because in a climate changing world, the reality is we all need storage devices and some degree of self-generation in the next, you know, 10, 20 years. You know, the reality is that's what's going to make our power more reliable. That's what's going to make it more sustainable. So I, I believe that people and society are moving that way and climate change is helping those who might have resisted the notion. Um, but at the end of the day, I think the thing I would love the monitors to know and maybe appreciate the most is we get the best outcome for all Vermonters by figuring out how to do it in an intensely collaborative, sharing economy way. So one of the things I love the most about what we did, Fran, in Vermont and at Green Mountain Power was we really shared energy. We created energy relationships where we're improving your home and your reliability, but we're sharing those energy devices in a way that lowers the cost mm. for the entire grid and all the Vermonters we served. So I think that kind of innovative thinking, that's what I wanna see replicated the most mm. around the country. Yeah, that the, the grid is remarkable. And it, you know, is now you mentioned climate change, is the climate crisis driving energy policy and business decisions now in a very real way? Are we, are we at a tipping point there? I, I hope so. I, I believe so. In fact, um, I've seen tremendous change uh, for many years, but I would say uh, it's really getting accelerated. Uh, you know, unfortunately, it's getting accelerated because, yes, the effects of the climate crisis are hitting people harder now all over the country and all over the world. But yes, I, it, particularly in the world of business, I mean, I've been really excited um, since I left Green Mountain Power to be engaged in now, you know, at least 10 different, um, you know, clean energy initiatives around the world, around the country. And really, I'm seeing just so much uh, capital is moving in the direction of clean energy. Uh, traditional companies are really wanting to embrace ESG and really transform their operations and how they serve their customers. So it gives me uh, real hope for the future. So, you know, I know that you know, trans transportation and heating is still, you know, what's creating the most emissions and you are, in, as you say, involved in these 10 new ventures. What's exciting you and, and surprising you now about what's coming down the pike? Well, I mean, I think the thing that is surprising me is the amount of capital, honestly, that is moving in this direction. I just don't think uh, people realize, I think between the divestment movements and uh, the, you know, just the desire for uh, clean energy, you're just seeing, you know, everything from really the big players like, uh, you know, Goldman Sachs and others, you know, just pouring capital into uh, new and emerging technology. So that's always a good sign for the future. Mm -hmm. So I always say the most exciting thing is the technology we don't even know about yet. <laughs> but, you know, but really back in the here and now, I would say storage technologies are just uh, really, really accelerating, you know, in terms of the prices coming down and the 
uh, technological improvements are still dramatically advancing. So that then really helps in terms of the uh, transportation market as well as uh, you know, integration of renewables and serving homes and communities. Sure, battery, battery, batteries. Um, and so what what is your plan for all of your personal energy uh, right now? Many speculate that you might run for political office. Uh, clearly you have the leadership skills, um, but you've never run for political office. Uh, and, and is that a space where you think you can make significant change? What's next for you? Um, you know, what, Fran, what really gets me motivated is helping to solve a problem and stepping in where there's a need. So I have said repeatedly, I absolutely don't rule out the idea of uh, political leadership at some point. Um, what would really move me would be the need, right? So if there is an opening and uh, and there is what I would determine as uh, a lack of the talent that we need to help lead and transform. So, so that's that's that. <laughs> okay. And you know, you were the first utility. In the meantime, to... the great great thing I found out, right? The great thing I found out about having all this incredible energy is that energy attracts energy. So I find I really, um, you know, when people say. It's so funny because so occasionally I bump into somebody and they say, "How do you how do you like retirement?" I'm like, "Oh, like what's that?" <laughs> I'm definitely what? enjoying a little bit of a, a little bit of a different schedule, but I'm involved in so many exciting uh, companies and transformations. Um, so I really do feel like my intense energy and passion is being uh, utilized for sure. Right, it, it, including um, Spot the Dog, your husband's company, which you, which yeah. Oprah noticed, and <laughs> and you helped get in involved with that. Well, Mary, Mary Powell, uh, we are um, excited to watch and see where you do go next and where you focus your energy. Thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, it's been a pleasure, Fran. Great to see you. Thanks so much. Okay. And thank you for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stay well. Thank you.